Hey guys, this is the Game Digest and here's a character creation guide for Dragon's Dogma 2. Would you like to play as one of the mightiest characters in anime or perhaps you desire to command the lion's sin of pride as your pawn? Here's how you can bring to life Eskinor, the most iconic character from the anime Seven Deadly Sins. And without further ado, let's dive right in. First off for the body. You need to max out his height which is 215, torso length of 59, and for the muscle style, type 19 is best for him. As for the muscle strength and trap size, of course it should be maxed out. Same is true for the upper and lower body muscle mass. Upper body size should be minus 100 and lower body size should be 0. Next for the head, head length should be a bit longer, so put it at 40. Head width at 27 and depth at 15. His face height should be lowered, so place it at minus 70, with neck length of 30 and maximum thickness at 100. Now for the upper body. Shoulder width should be 70 with size of 55. Chest thickness and size should be at maximum 100. Torso width and depth at negative 40 to make it lean enough. Arm length at 60, the maximum size. Upper and forearm thickness should be both at 100 because we need him to be as built as possible. For the lower body, waist width should be at negative 55 to negative 100 range and with a waist size of negative 100. Rear size should be maxed out, leg size is at 40, thigh should be 30 and calf size should be at 55. And for the posture, bring down his movement style to the lowest possible range which is negative 100. Because Escanor moves with minimal motion, especially when walking, elbow angle should be at 10, knee angle at negative 100, and posture should be at 50. His posture should be as straight as possible. Now let's go for the head. The perfect base for him is the number 20. For his skin, design number 17 fits him well with skin color at number 31, and wrinkles to about 50 and sheen at 20. Next up is one of the most notable characteristics, his brow. It should be replaced as accurately as possible. Brow height should be at negative 70 with spacing at negative 27. Overall brow depth should be at negative 23 with the inner depth of negative 24 and the outer depth of negative 22. For the brow angle, it should droop down to the lateral end hence placing them at 100 and bend at negative 10. Now for the eyes, eyes should be at 0, width of 30, and eye depth should be at negative 15. Eye size should be a bit smaller, so place it at negative 35. For the eye angle, it should follow the direction of the eyebrow, so place it at 30, and have both eyes squint at 65. For the nose length is at 32, and make the bridge wider at 55. Bridge height should be 30 with overall bump of 25 and make the upper protrude a bit at 60. For the lower part at 8, nostril size should be small enough so place it at 0. Height should be at negative 50 and width of negative 45. Tip depth at negative 2, angle at negative 10 and sharpness at negative 10. For the ears, you can leave them at 0 values. For the cheek part, all values here should be strictly followed. Thickness should be at negative 45 with zero bulge and neck fat of negative 85. Cheek height should be maxed out with at 20 and depth at negative 100. For the mouth part, height should be at negative 2 with width of 80 and protrusion of negative 65. Mouth corner should be at 50 with negative 95 lip thickness and zero lip position. And to complete the topology of Escanor's face, let's now head down to the jaw and chin. Define the jaw at 45 and for its width, anything from 80 to 100 range is the perfect spot. With its position at negative 100 and protrusion of 50. As for the chin, height should be at 80 with the width at negative 60, maxed out protrusion and sharpness at 0. Now for the hairstyle. Well, we don't have an exact match, design number 20 closely aligns with the direction and length of his hair. You can use style 6 as well, but it can feel a bit different. For the color, use shade number 77 for both the root and tip color. Sheen position at 70 and sheen at 10 to 16. 
But the eyebrow shape number 6 is perfect for him and make the color slightly darker but saturated. So choose shade 70 and thickness should be at 70. Now for the facial hair, there's only one option that is truly fitting for him and this is his most iconic mustache, which is style number 25. Color should be a bit darker so pick shade number 76 for both root and tip color. Blend at 50, sheen at 10, and position at 55. Body hair should be at default or at minimum as possible. Now for the eyes, choose type 1 design. Iris primary color should be at shade number 164. And secondary shade should be at saturated, so choose 187. This will give the iris the greenish tint even when zoomed out. Then tertiary color should be brighter, so choose shade number 154. Celera should be maintained whitish at 107. Iris size at 0 and pupil size should be at 10. For the eyelashes, eyeshadow, eyeliner, freckles, and other makeup add-ons, leave them at default or don't apply any. Now for the tattoo, of course we need that lion symbol of pride at his back. Unfortunately, we don't have the exact tattoo, but here we try to closely imitate how it looks like. This tattoo is composed of two. For the first one, pick design number 7 with its primary color being shade 23. Drag it towards his back by placing at 50 in the horizontal position, then bring it upwards at negative 8 in the vertical position. Then rotate it at 50 to mimic the lion's mane in the tattoo. Overall scale should be at 25 with vertical scale at 24 and horizontal scale at 9. It should be at max capacity and 50 intensity. Then to mimic the lion, we will add our second tattoo for this one. Style number 14 should do the trick with primary and secondary color shade of 23. Then drag it towards his back again at 50 mark on the horizontal position. Then upwards at negative 8 point, maintain the rotation in default. Overall scale should be at 25 with vertical scale of 11 and horizontal scale of 13. And just like the first tattoo, opacity should be maxed out and intensity should be at 50. And voila, we have mimic Escanor's Sin of Pride tattoo. For the vocation, let's pick Warrior and for his voice, we've found Gallant Knight 1 to best suit him. That completes our overall guide on how to make Escanor the Lion Sin of Pride. Now you can either play as him or have him as your pawn. Just take note that once the sun rises to its highest point in the sky, prepare to meet the one. Feel free to post down below your comments about our video. Stay tuned for more Dragon's Dogma 2 tutorials and guides. If you want more gaming content, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to the Game Digest and don't forget to enable the notifications by clicking on the bell icon. Thank you for your support and stay tuned for our next game guides and reviews. We'll see you next time.